Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. Friends, I know that we don't do seasons here on the Angels and Awakening podcast. What we typically do is just do two episodes every week for the last four and a half years. Um, what That's what we're going to continue to do, right? But I, I tend to, in my own mind, think of this podcast in terms of seasons when it comes to like, hey, we're starting fall and we're kicking off fall and then you've got a winter season and then you've got a spring season and a summer season. So we're here at the beginning of the fall 2023 season of the Angels and Awakening podcast. And I'm just so incredibly excited for you to dive into really this entire season of the Angels and Awakening podcast because we have so many great people coming on the show. And I just feel so humbled. Um, we have Neil Donald Walsh coming on the show. He is not here today. He's going to be here. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh, for those of you who might be like, I know that name, Julie. Where do I know that from? Uh, he wrote Conversations with God, which is a, a book that I started reading with a friend when I was right out of college. But these books uh, were around in the 90s, 2000s. I think he's had over 30, 35 New York Times bestsellers. It's a lot. He came on the show. And as I was going back and reading some of Neil's work, it was really interesting. I didn't know just how much of what I naturally organically channel from the angels was showing up in his work and in these books. And so I had this wonderful conversation with Neil and uh, it was at a point over this summer while I was writing a book proposal for a publisher. And I was telling Neil about this afterwards and he goes, uh, so when's your deadline? So I told him when my deadline is and he goes, okay, if you get your book done by that deadline, he goes, I want you to send it to me and I'm going to write the forward to your book. And friends, I was just floored because I hadn't asked him to do that. Just such a kind, warm, gentle soul who is such a great channel for the other side. So I'm so excited for you to get to hear this conversation this season. We've got Chris Carr on. You probably know who she is. Um, she had many best-selling books to begin with, but then her dad passed away and she has a new book on grief called I'm Not a Morning Person. That's going to be uh, another episode we're doing Mark Nepo is going to be on the podcast. I don't know about you guys, but I've been reading his books for years and years and years. He's an incredible spiritual author. Radley Valentine is coming on the show. Actress Yvonne Orji from the hit, what do they call that? HBO Max now show Insecure. She's coming on the podcast. We've got the amazing Elliot Connie coming on the podcast. So many incredible people who are really changing the world. You know, another great person who's going to come on the show and uh, I, I found his book and I was like, oh, you know, Spirit, this is really a business book. This isn't for me. And Spirit goes, just read the dang book. Uh, so I read it and I I had no idea how spiritual this man is. Michael Stainer, and he's coming on the podcast. That conversation blew me away just how deep we went in that conversation. So you have a great fall lineup for now through, you know, January to carry you through. I'm so excited for you to hear these episodes today. What I'm sharing with you a couple of times a year, I share a talk that I gave in the angel membership. And so that's what I'm doing today because friends, if, if I could get this talk into the hands of every single soul on planet earth, that is what I would do. This is a message that the angels channeled through. And I just think it's so needed right now. It also ties in, this is going to be the, the first um, video within the course, be your own angel messenger, because here's what we need to know, friends. 
Friends, there are so many people who come to me all the time and they're like, Julie, I want to tune in, but I'm not sure if I'm doing it. Julie, I want to uh, get daily guidance from my spirit team, but I'm really not sure if it's them. Or Julie, I, I feel like I'm praying, but I'm not hearing anything back. Or sometimes people are like, I'm hearing stuff back, but I don't know what's right. Julie, how do I know whether or not I can trust my intuition? How do I know whether or not my intuition is correct? And friends, you're going to hear a deep dive that I go into today on this. But the fact of the matter is this. I'm going to I'm going to start big and then I'm going to go small. So stay with me here for a second. Consciousness is expanding. Your consciousness ex- is expanding and when they talk about the universe, the multiverse, how It's expanding in every direction constantly. What the angels came in and said one day is that that's how your soul is too. Your soul is expanding outward and inward simultaneously every minute of every day. And if you think about the entire multiverse and how big that is, And how small, small is, and just how much space and consciousness there is to you as a soul. Your soul wanted to experience itself in order to know yourself, in order to express yourself, in order to experience yourself. That's why you are here. That is why you exist. I'm really starting to see things from the angel's perspective in that God universe source didn't ask us to come for this lifetime. We wanted to know ourselves express ourselves, experience ourselves. And the only way to do that in this lifetime is to follow your own inner guidance. There is this soft whisper within your heart, within your, you know, heart chakra that is your inner wisdom. It is your compass. And when you know how to follow this and You become really good at it where you don't need to ask for a lot of other people's opinions. I still get advice from mentors. I still have mentors that that teach me, but I used to have five, six, seven people that I would call to get their opinion on everything before I took action on anything. And it was exhausting. When you know how to follow your own inner compass and decipher what Is my intuition signaling to me? What is the message my intuition is bringing to me? When do I know that my intuition is correct? When do I know it's wrong? When you know how to do these things, you become a force to be reckoned with because you're following what's right for you in this lifetime. And that's as close as you're going to get to your Akashic Records plan, your life plan, to everything. What your soul wanted to know about yourself, express about yourself, experience about itself, it knows the way. It knows the way to get you to that point. We all have amnesia here. We're all in the same spot. But there is a way for you to return to the truth within you, your truth. And that's by becoming your own messenger, really getting to know your intuition, know exactly when it's right, helping it to be more clear. There is a way to help you make your intuition more clear. And that's what your angels want for you. Because when you know what is right for you, you start running and taking action with it. And it is that action that leads you to a place of heaven on earth. And so, friends, what I want you to know is that there is so much that your spirit team right here, right now, that they are leading you to. My goodness, you have so many angels around you, and they're all trying to get you to tune in and listen in. And so if you feel like 
you are not clear on what that sounds like or what that feels like, and you want to be more clear, I really highly encourage you to join the Be Your Own Angel Messenger course to join it and register today. We're starting off September 18th. If you want even extra perks, there's a regular ticket or there's a VIP ticket option where you can have even more conversations with me in smaller groups. This is an entire course that we're going through over four weeks, September 18th to October 14th, 2023. If you're listening afterwards, it'll be on our website for you to purchase afterwards. Go to the show notes, register today if this is for you, and you'll know because you just feel called within your heart. We're going to lead you through an entire four weeks of activities and different tools that I have never even talked about before here on the podcast to really help you tune into that inner compass that we all have within us and make it crystal clear. The other thing that I want you to know, because there's so many people who say, well, Julie, what's the difference between the Angel Reiki School and this class? I'll tell you exactly what it is. And this is the scenario that the angels brought in. They said, imagine you're sitting in a restaurant, okay? And imagine that there are just tons of people in this restaurant, right? Like you're meeting a friend, having lunch, they're talking to you, there's your uh, waiter, there's the cooks, there's the hostess, there's just tons of people in this restaurant. When you are a healer yourself, what happens is you're not tuning into your own spirit team. You're tuning into the spirit team of all these other people. With Not without their permission, with their permission, but just imagine, just so you get the feel of it, right? Imagine that you're in this restaurant and there's all of these people and all of their spirit teams came with them, right? It's the ability to tune into their spirit teams and bring through messages. That's the Angel Reiki School. The Angel Reiki School teaches teaches you how to be the expert, teaches you how to hone this as your craft in order to take other souls' lives into your hands and really help them to the maximum degree possible um, within the spiritual realm and their own spirituality. When it comes to the Be Your Own Angel Messenger course, it's just as important. It's just that now you're sitting in this restaurant just with yourself and there's no one else there, right? So when you're just in this restaurant alone, it's only you and your spirit team. The Be Your Own Angel Messenger course, the membership, it all gives you access to hear your spirit team crystal clear. Because when you hear them in your personal life, you're following your own internal compass. You're running and you're taking action based on what it is that your spirit team is showing you. And when that happens, that is when you are really on your on track, right? Like doing what you came here to do. And when that is happening, you feel this ultimate sense of fulfillment, which leads me into the talk today. And this is going to tie everything together. Friends, I swear, I love this talk so much. I wish I could get this talk out in front of millions and millions and millions of people because this is the biggest message that spirit wants everybody to really know about themselves and their own journey. So here it is. The talk for the day. And if it calls to you, the Be Your Own Messenger course is for you. Start September 18th. Can't wait to meet you and work with you. You can register today in the show notes below. Love you, friends. And here is us kicking off the fall season of the Angels and Awakening podcast. All right. So I want to talk about new stuff that we've never talked about before. And I just want to thank you for kind of going through this year with me where we've been diving into topics of somatic work and embodiment work because it's really helped me come to a greater understanding of why we're here, what we're doing, and how to work with our spirit team in an even different way, different capacity. So one of the things that has been coming in a lot, and and I hope that I can kind of 
relate it to you in this way. You ever feel like you're stuck in the middle of the message? Like your life is happening, experiences are happening around you. And you're like, I know that there is a greater message to all of this, but I have no clue what that is. I think a lot of times we get frustrated or we maybe try and push the message too soon. But if we just allow life to unfold, there is this natural process by where we're just kind of collecting crumbs, these breadcrumbs or like eggs in an Easter basket, right? You're just going around and you're like, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what all this is for, but I know it's going to come together. So when you're in the middle of the message, it feels messy. It feels uncertain. It doesn't always feel like your energy because you're trying to piece together new parts of yourself that you don't truly have in full, right? Which is why they say hindsight is twenty twenty. because looking back on it, you're like, oh, that's what was happening, but you have no clue while you're in the messy middle of it. What I want today to kind of give you by looking at life and some different perspectives, some different lenses, some different views is more comfort when you're in the messy middle, okay? So what happens is The way that I have started to see life, and I've been kind of in the messy middle of this message for the last last like eight months, and looking back on it, now I get what they were trying to say and how they were trying to say it. There are two really opposing different views within this world how most 8.1 billion people look at spirituality, especially within the United States. And these two opposing views are either over here, um, and I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. I'm just kind of giving you a clearer perspective from eight months of messages to where they're bringing me to. When I would read Eckhart Tolle and a lot of, there's so much wisdom in all of his writing, right? But at the same time, a part of my soul would be like, I don't just want to be in oneness. I don't just want to be connected to the whole. I really want to live. I want to live with the oneness and I want to experience life. I want to experience love. And I love jet skis like my dad did. And I love traveling and I want to do and I want to be, and I want to experience life. These two different perspectives that I'm talking about, I think a lot of people feel that the fundamental root of spirituality is coming back to total, complete oneness with all that is. And that that is what we're trying to do. And so in order to do that, a lot of people try and be good and worthy enough to be one with the whole again. They try and maybe even shun their ego. I know there was a lot of this in religious upbringing for my generation and the generation before me, where, hey, you're not supposed to have an ego. This is not true, but this is what they taught. You're not supposed to fall into your own wants, needs, beliefs, desires, because that ego is bad and you want to be one with the whole, right? Okay, so let's just take that for what it is and say this philosophy of spirituality right over here is being worthy enough to be one with oneness, God, universe, source, and the whole again. Over here, there's another perspective. And there are some people who believe that God, universe, source didn't ask you to come to earth and say, okay, 
you know, Autumn, you need to come and do this. Christina, you need to come and do this. Chana Sue, you need to come and do this. I need you to come to earth. It's more so that these souls, and you can see it when you tune into the other side. There are trillions of souls, if not more, who want to come for these lifetimes. It's that our little soul went to God universe source and we're part of the whole. Now this is, kind of take this, set it aside. I know I'm going deep here, but I'm going to bring it full circle. I promise. We've all heard that the universe is expanding, right? The universe is expanding out in every direction. And I believe that God, universe, source, God, consciousness, our souls, you could perceive it the same way. Our soul is ever expanding, but not just outwardly, also inwardly. And this is where I talk about uh, that funny movie, Ant-Man. If you've ever seen Ant-Man 1 or 2, you can see how small, small really is. So I had this vision of if everything's expanding outwardly, it's also expanding infinitely inwards as well. And that's what infinity is, right? Constant expansion outwards and inwards. So if you're a droplet in the ocean of this expansion, outwards and inwards. And your one droplet cannot be separate from the whole. You're one with all that is. That is your truest nature. That is your truest self. Then there is so much of you to experience. Which is why the droplet wanted to recognize itself, wanted to experience itself. And so what it means when we say, hey, we went to God and said, I want to live. I believe it means we wanted to know ourselves. We wanted to express ourselves. And we wanted to experience ourselves. And when you look at this, I'm going to say this a couple of times today. You can't know yourself, express yourself, experience yourself just through thinking your thoughts alone. You can't know yourself, express yourself, experience yourself just by speaking words. Hey, I'm going to go do this. Hey, I'm going to go do that. The root of you knowing yourself, expressing yourself, experiencing yourself can only come from action, can only come from you being here, present in this lifetime and living by taking action in your life. So take that, kind of hold it off to the side. So now you have these two different perspectives. Why are we here? Why do we exist? Do we exist to reintegrate with the whole of all that is? Or did we come to experience the play of life and experience, know, express ourselves? When you look at it from this different perspective and these two pieces, it also changes purpose, right? So what is your purpose? And and this started to come about because I got to tell you, when I work with people on this, clients and sessions, groups, I hear all the time people saying, I'm waiting for God to show me what my purpose is until I know 110%, 111%. And then I will go take action. And spirit said, you can't know yourself, express yourself, experience yourself until the action has been taken. So now there's this juxtaposition. Here you have people waiting. And from my perspective, what I keep seeing is some people are waiting decades upon decades to have the clouds part in the sky, the ah moment, which I want too. I think everybody naturally wants this. 
but it's not coming. And it's not coming because God didn't ask us to fully come here. We wanted to be here. And the only purpose that we have is to know ourselves, express ourselves, experience ourselves. And the only way that you can do that is not by following what someone else wants for you or somebody else's opinions. Or It's only by following your own inner compass. So when it comes to purpose, if we are waiting and waiting and waiting for the concrete, this is what it is, we're not following our hearts. We're not following our heart's desires. And even more so, I've been working with so many people this year who believe it's wrong for them to have desires, who believe it's wrong for them to have wants and needs, that they shouldn't have that. But I think that's a false belief because if you don't have that, there is no compass. The compass of your heart is what you want, you need, you desire, your wishes. I mean, sometimes we think about it like wishes, but what is a wish? It is your heart's desire. This is what I want. So from my perspective of doing this work as a healer and working with people, people will say, I want this. This is my wish. If I had three wishes and I put them in a fountain, these would be the three things that I wanted. But then they're not willing to take action and go after them because there's so much confusion like mixed into our energy of we're not supposed to have an ego. We're not supposed to have wants, needs, and desires. And so we don't go after what it is that we really want. Friends, do you want to get daily guidance from your spirit team, but just don't know how to tune in? Or maybe you've been trying to hear your intuition, but you feel like you're not hearing anything back. Or maybe you're hearing something back, but you don't know if it's your spirit team or not. Let me teach you all of this and more in my brand new four-week course called Be Your Own Angel Messenger. I'm running this class live September 18th. And if this resonates with you, it's because your angels are trying to teach you how to tune into this information so they can guide you more directly in your life and so that you'll feel more confident following your heart. It all begins September 18th. Be sure to check out the VIP ticket for smaller group lessons. Just a reminder that annual paying members get this course and the VIP ticket free as a perk. Become an annual member before September 17th and receive this course free as part of your annual paying angel membership. Find a link to more info in the show notes below. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, so let me add in one more thing. I've said this a couple of times and you can probably see how I've come to this conclusion from the podcast if you've been listening to it. I don't believe that fulfillment is what we think it is. A lot of people think of fulfillment as a destination. And, you know, we've all been lied to multiple times. The fairy tale when we were little, we get married and you have kids and everything's going to be perfect and you're going to be fulfilled then. And then you get to that point and you're like, Jesus, they totally freaking lied to me. There is no fulfillment in this. Like, I still feel like I need to explore myself, know myself in different ways than having a family. And you feel guilty for that. And then they say to you, oh, Well, if you can just make it until you retire, or you can just make it until your deathbed, then you will feel fulfillment. And it's a load of BS. It's so much BS. Fulfillment is an emotion. Fulfillment itself is the emotion that comes from taking action. 
on your wants, your needs, your desires, because that is your inner compass leading you on your only purpose here on earth, which is to know, express, and experience yourself. And from that perspective, when you really get into your life, you can see where you're more in the driver's seat with your gas on the brake and the pedal more than ever before. Because when you feel overwhelmed or overloaded, you've been doing too much, you've been burning the candle at both ends, And you feed yourself that lie. Well, I just have to keep going because this is my purpose. I was called here to do. I have no, you start to follow yourself and, and you really start to tune in to your own energy more and more and more and more. And it's from that place that I believe that we go through this cycle. Okay. And I've talked about this cycle a little bit, but I think it really applies here. There is a way in which God, universe, source is communicating with us. And it isn't to direct us in a way where they're telling us exactly what to do. It's in a way that we're able to use our own heart compass to navigate this life with some direction, some guidance to find ourselves. And so I believe your compass works like this. A lot of times we get an intuitive hit first, which is why we've been spending this year on somatic work and which has really helped bring everything full circle for me because the fact of the matter is we don't have to be worthy to be one with the whole, we are one with the whole. We will always be one with the whole. And sometimes it really frustrates me when I'm on the podcast and guests will come on and they'll be like, Julie, you do a lot. I'll be like, I know. And they're like, you really got to center yourself. You really got to get present. You really, and I'm like, that's what I do all my stuff from. It's from presence, right? Where you are inspired. And from oneness and the centered and being in the now, you receive intuitive hits. And that intuition, I concretely 110% believe, is feeling in nature. That you just get something and you feel it within your body. Anybody ever seen like a cardinal or a sign and you feel like, Like you feel that wonder or amazing. It's felt within the body. I've not been moved by a ton of art. I'm just not a person who's constantly moved by it. But I remember going into this uh, art gallery when I was on vacation one time on the East Coast and seeing this painting and it hit something within me that was like, That is the most beautiful piece of art I've ever seen. A lot of times I feel it with the sky or with the ocean or with mountains where I just, I feel like it hits something really, really deep within me and I feel it. When you're inspired, you get that sense of awe and wonder and it hits you very deeply too. (gasps) oh my God, this is for me. This is a nugget for me on my path. What Spirit has said this year is that you cannot be inspired by something that is not for you. So the only things that can move you, inspire you, reach that deep place within you where you feel that awe and that wonder is only that which reflects like a mirror. This is life. This is your soul. You go through life and you're experiencing it and your soul's going through it at the same time and you see that painting and it hits you. It's because it's your soul. 
you're connecting into that is how you know yourself. What inspires you is for you. What inspires you, I would say on some levels, is you. And so when we get that inspiration, what happens is you can take it to the next level of communication with God, universe, source, because that inspiration is the divine moving through you. It is you experiencing your own divinity, God consciousness, God energy, the expansion. It's you experiencing it, right? So you can take that which inspires you and you can move it to the next level, which is imagination. So imagination is, and I believe intuition is too, intuitive inspiration, intuitive imagination. Okay, that's how I want you to think about this. So intuitive inspiration, we just talked about intuitive imagination is the next level of the cycle. So when you have that inspiration, I remember, um, I'll share a story with you. I felt inspired in 1995, 1996 by YouTube, right? Remember back in the day when YouTube was just kind of getting up and going and everybody would have like that big chair in the background and they'd sit in that chair and they'd just talk to you from one little place in their house and podcasts weren't around yet. Blogs weren't around. Uh, blogs were around. I didn't resonate with blogs, right? Blogs like just did not call to me whatsoever. But the YouTube thing did. And so I went out to TJ Maxx, inspired. Okay, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Got the big chair, fixed up the background, got the thing, the ring light, the thing to hold the camera. And I go to do the very first YouTube talk. And I'm like, shit. This does not feel comfortable at all. I don't want to see more of my face. Like, I don't need any compliments here. Just hearing myself talk and be reflected and seeing my face. This is a little too much. I don't feel comfortable. I do not like this. What the F spirit? Because I was inspired. I knew I was inspired. So I went in. I... I thought I knew what it was. I took action. I got it all set up and it still doesn't feel comfortable at all. Messy effing middle, right? So a couple months later, I'm in a session in person at my house. And for the first time ever, I feel pressure on my hand. I hear stuff. I see stuff, but I don't feel stuff touch me, which is freaking me out a little bit. And it takes my cheek and it's just a light pressure and it keeps going like this. And I keep moving it back. No, I'm focused in on my client. And every single time I do, it keeps moving my face back over. So I say to the woman on the table, what do you do with YouTube? Because they keep moving my head over and I can't concentrate because they keep having me look at this YouTube little station I have set up. She goes, oh, I'm a podcaster. I go, what, what is a podcast? And she goes, oh, well, you know, it's like radio, but it's on this app and people can download it. And the biggest hit within my body just comes rushing in. And I see a vision of myself taking this client out to lunch and just asking her a million questions on podcasts, because this is my answer. Hey, if I could have a radio show and not have to look at myself on camera, perfect. I can talk all day long, but I don't want to see myself. So I take her out to lunch and the rest is history, right? 
the vision clarifies. And, you know, going back and writing this book proposal over the summer, um, yeah, Jody Hugh, she's the one who, who's, I was just talking about, she was my client and I, uh, she took me out to lunch or I took her out to lunch and she gave me my first microphone and it was amazing. She's got an awesome podcast. I went back over this summer while I was writing this book and I felt called spirit was like, pick up this book. So I picked it up. I remember sitting at the pool, dripping wet and getting this book all wet, but reading Care of the Soul by Thomas More. And in the back, I had put this message. I had written it down. Maybe I could be America's journalist of the soul, start my own magazine. Now, this was before blogs or the internet really was big or podcasts. When you're in the messy middle, especially in today's day and age where so much is going to be developed that we have no clue about within the next 5, 10, 15 years. All of us are sitting here trying to communicate with the other side and they're like, oh, sweet soul, you have no idea what this means because it hasn't even been invented yet. You just have to do what we need you to be doing right now and just trust that this is going to lead to when that invention is in the future, it's all going to connect together. So from inspiration, you can go to this imagination piece and you can say, what do you need me to be doing? Okay, I feel inspired to create the YouTube channel What do you need me to be doing? And oftentimes you're going to get a visual, right? Like my visual is to take Jody out to lunch where then she gave me her, the first microphone. And then when we were at lunch, she offered to come over to my house and she sat there for like four or five hours with me, teaching me how to edit podcasts. After imagination, and you can increase the Info that you get through the imagination by asking questions. I mean, you can simply flat out ask the other side, are all the pieces available to me yet to know everything? And the answer might be yes and it might be no. Okay, what do you need me to know? Is this something that I need to be taking action on? Is this something that I just need to be marinating on for a while? The more questions that you ask in the visioning phase, the more that they can show you visually. And what I want you to know too, is that as I've been talking to Spirit this year, they've been saying, it's not possible for some people to have some of the clairs, but not others. Because we're all made of the same stuff. Your soul is whole with the oneness of all that is. That's just who you are, the root core of who you are. So all of us have the ability to imagine, to get inspired, and then take action. So intuitive imagination, uh, intuitive inspiration, intuitive imagination, intuitive action. Not everything is something that we're called to take action on. I have a friend who lives down the street. And when we go walking, she'll say to my, my girlfriends and I on the walk. So Instagram wants me to have, <laughs> cause she's like, I kind of keep getting, um, ads from Instagram and it really wants me to have this. So I think I'm going to go try it. Right. Instagram wants me to have. And I thought of that this morning because Instagram keeps showing me this, uh, device that takes almonds and makes it into almond milk. And I'm like, get the F out of here. You stupid ad. I don't want to make my own almond milk. I don't care. I love the environment. I'm so sorry. You know, if that's wrong, I've tried other types of milks. I cannot do it. I like my almond milk. I don't want to make my own almond milk at home. That is not the action that I am feeling called to take. So there's not all action that you have to take, but it got me thinking that in a time where we grew up 
there wasn't a lot of choice, especially for women. It was kind of like, just do as you're told, do as you're told, do as you're told, do as you're told. And I see that mentality sometimes within myself and other women around me that it's still a part of us in a way that we still have to keep working out time and time and time again because it was so deeply ingrained in a lot of us growing up. So I want you to empower yourselves that not all inspirational, um, intuitive action needs to be taken. It's just that which calls to you. If you don't want to make the almond milk yourself, don't go make the almond milk yourself. Go get the almond milk from the store. What is the action that you're feeling called to? When you think about all the different places within the world that you could go visit, You don't want to go visit all of them. They don't all call to you. It does not call to me to go to a remote place in the middle of Canada where there is no one else around, not a a person in the world for two or three hours. That does not feel fun to me personally. It might to you. But if it feel really fun to go to Thailand, it feel really, really fun to go back to Paris and show my kiddo that one day feel really great to go back to Italy one day and do all of that stuff, but do it with my kiddo. That would be so fun. There's certain things that call to you. There's certain things that don't. And when you go through this process, you're inspired. You get that vision. You go take action. It leads to another piece, which is you feeling this ultimate fulfillment. And fulfillment isn't something that you get once. Fulfillment comes from working this cycle and working this process by being in this dance with God, universe, source, and the other side and your spirit team by falling madly in love with the journey of life and saying, I don't care how messy it is. I really want to be here. You know, as I was writing this all out, what really came to me is there is a place that we have all existed in God consciousness and in God energy where we have all been one with the whole and we all are. You are it right now, right? All of us right here in this moment, you are one with all that is but I really, really want to live. Like I really, really want to experience life. I want to experience watching my daughter grow up and watching her fall in love. And I want to experience going to different places. And I want to experience writing different books that help people. And I want to experience being a healer who gets to help as many people as I can in this lifetime. And I want to experience having a puppy always by my side. You know, I love my little shih tzus. They're amazing. There's so much that I want to live here for and be here for, which in all honesty feels really, really emotional because within my personal journey, I haven't always felt that way. Having suicidal thoughts and having the flip be with me a long time ago of, I don't want to be here. And I can tell you that This different way of looking at these two different spiritual routes and this different way of looking at purpose really fuels your entire being with this energy of, I want to live. I want to do things here on earth that I can't do anywhere else. I want to see, I want to be here. I want to be present. I want to be here now. And so when you're in fulfillment and you center yourself with rest and with presence, it is only through presence itself that you are oneness as you're doing, as you're being inspired, as you're getting intuitive hits, you are one. 
listen, I can be working a 12 hour day, but I'm still rooted in presence and oneness. And because I am rooted in that, what inspires me, I feel it immediately. Boom. You don't always go through life every single day getting inspirational hits. Sometimes a week passes. Sometimes a month passes. Sometimes you have a year where it was not as inspirational as maybe you thought it was going to be. But when inspiration strikes, it is for you. And when you start to ask the other side more questions about that inspiration, my God, and then you go take action on it. And then you recenter yourself back to presence. It begins to be this cycle that is this dance with life. And it becomes very fun. And I can remember back to those years where I felt like I wasn't being inspired and that that inspiration wasn't coming around a lot. And I can tell you for certain, it's because I wasn't taking action. It was because I was missing part of this cycle. And you can't get that next inspirational hit without taking the action. Like if I would not have gone and set up that YouTube station within my house and spirit would have been putting their hand on my head or my chin and turning it, what would I be looking at within my house? So some people would say, Julie, was it right or wrong for you to go create that YouTube station? Because, hey, you never freaking used it. Is there a right or wrong? When it comes to this dance and this cycle, can you really make a mistake? Because it's all leading you to that next piece. And so if I wouldn't have started the podcast without creating that teeny tiny little YouTube station, was it a mistake to make that YouTube station? No, because it gave me the next piece in my puzzle. And when you start to look at life, imagine you have this slinky, right? A slinky is round. And when you set it on the ground, it just kind of stacks up. But if you looked at it from above, just like so it looks like a circle, right? So if you looked at the cycle I just talked to you about, intuitive inspiration, intuitive imagination, intuitive action, intuitive rest. From the outside looking in, it looks like a circle, right? But pick up the top of the slinky, pull it up, and it's not a circle. It's a spiral. And so often in life, people talk to us about like God leveling us up. I feel it. I feel it this year. I have being leveled up. And that's when you're in the messy middle and you know God's trying to talk to you about something and you're like, I can't figure it out. What is the freaking message? Just tell me in simple language. I will go do it. That's not the dance of life. That's not what we signed up for. That's certainty. If God Universe Source was just to come here and say, ah, Julie, the answer is just go do this. There is no play. There is no me knowing myself, expressing myself, or experiencing myself. There's just knowing. So when you fall in love, madly in love, like you are in the honeymoon stage of life itself. You're just in love with the process of living. You start to see that life isn't a circle. This process isn't a circle. It's a spiral. But the spiral doesn't go upward. Take that cycle, turn it upside down, put it into the ground. It, it's depth. So this cycle is an up-leveling, but spirit goes, it doesn't take you up. It takes you into the depth of yourself. 
where with each time you go around this circle, you are knowing yourself, expressing yourself, experiencing yourself, coming into that great expansion of everything, everywhere, where the universe is expanding outward in every direction and inward in every direction. And it is massive. And you're experiencing it. How? Because you're madly in love with your life and you are allowing it to take you deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into yourself. And so that is it. That is the message. And when you go through this process and this is the spirituality that you are living life with, You live with this energy that I call fulfillment, but it's like life is enchanted because at any moment on this path, inspiration can strike. And at any moment, your imagination can come in and show you that next piece. And now we're getting past and beyond just seeing the signs and angel numbers and and being like, oh, yeah, that's nice. I feel supported. This is not just that. We have that. We've got that already. We're going deeper. We're communicating with life itself. And we're, we're living the dance of going deeper within ourselves. Friends, I hope you loved this talk together. I hope it brought together so much for you in your life. One of the things that we talked about after this episode was the fact that there are multiple different spirals happening um, within your lives. And that's something that we're going to go deeper into in the course. Be your own angel messenger. Friends, if today's episode is resonating for you, if you want to know when your intuition is right on, when you want to just know like you know like you know within your heart and be taking action and feel that ultimate sense of fulfillment, then the Be Your Own Angel Messenger course, it's calling to you because the angels had me create it especially for you. We're getting started September 18th. Join us for four weeks as you really get to know your intuition and trust it more than ever before. Friends, I love you. You can find all of these details and register today in the show notes below. If you have any questions, if you need any help, reach out to us, juliejancis at gmail.com. Love you, friends. Have a very blessed day and just feel the presence of your angel surrounding you. Tune in right now and ask them what they want you to know because they have messages for you personally right here, right now. And they, they asked me to deliver that final message. I love you, friends. Have a blessed, blessed day. And I will see you in the Be Your Own Angel Messenger course. And right back here every every Monday, every Thursday with a brand new episode. Love you, friends.